we talk, we talk about so many disasters. We talk about, uh, uh, you know, refugees, you know, uh, around the world. You know, people who are affected because of politics, because of religion, because of race, because of so many reasons. But we forget to talk about climate refugees. And that is going to be the largest number of people in the future. According to uh, statistics, an average of 26 million people around the world have been forcibly displaced by floods, windstorms, earthquakes and droughts. And this number by 2050 will be increasing to 2 million people who've been, who will be forced to flee their homes, the places where they live in, the places where they work, where their forefathers lived, where they hope their children will live. They will have to leave these places and move and run as refugees because of climate change. And sadly, the Refugee Conven Convention in 1951 it did not talk about the climate refugees, and we did not uh, care about them then. We did not even know much about it then. But then, you know, uh, it is the responsibility of countries like India to make sure that these people are inclu included. Climate refugees are included, and there's a definition for climate refugees so that, uh, you know, their, uh, their uh, plight can be addressed and the world can be more sympathetic towards them. Sir, and India is going to be affected, in India itself, close to 1.5 million are being displaced every year because of climate change and because of extremities which we face every year. And just not being displaced internally. Neighboring countries can be affected because of water levels raising in the sea and if they are submerged, people are going to come to our country and we will be affected. So what is the plan? What is the policy? Do you have any clarity of idea? Do you uh, have any, uh, have you thought about it? How are you going to handle the people who are going to be internally displaced? Agriculture is going to be affected. Uh, people in the coastal areas are going to be affected. The uh, uh, fishing people are going to be affected. Their livelihoods are going to go. How are we going to handle that? How are we going to handle people who are coming from other nations into our country? Sir, so we know uh, uh, this house has seen that, I mean, members must have seen what happened in many of the states in, the, in India. And recently in Tamil Nadu, there has been an excess of 75% rainfall in Tamil Nadu. And these extreme weather conditions are definitely a, a cause, uh, they are caused by erratic rainfall patterns and the impact of climate change cannot be ignored because they are overlapping. And uh, cities and the agricultural uh, lands, everything is being affected. Uh, cities are being flooded. Do we have any plan how we are going to deal with it in future? It is there. We have a problem, there's excessive rainfall. Uh, Chennai was flooded. My constituency, Tutukudi, was flooded. We were uh, struggling to drain the water out. But I think the union government has to have a clear plan about how we are going to deal with it, how, uh, you know, how future rainfalls, uh, monsoons are going to be dealt with. Do you have any plans? Do you have any clarity about it? But Sadly, Chennai is struggling with floods. We, uh, water doesn't have any way to go out to the sea. And in spite of all that, you want to expand the port. And you want to close the Ennur uh, Creek and the Kosasalayar River Basin because you want to expand the port. What, what happens? To the city, what happens to the people there? Should we all drown? That's the only thing which will happen if uh, the creek is closed. What a shame! So, yeah, I mean, we have to think about we, we, uh, what we have, uh, you know, what is good in the long run, what is there good for the people, and not for what is good for the corporates. So, the Prime Minister's Council on 
climate change. It was constituted in 2007. And then it was reconstituted like everything would be reconstituted in 2014. The Prime Minister held its first meeting of the Council in January 19, 2015. I would like to ask the Minister if the Council ever met after that. Because I, I've looked through the media and other reports and there's no information of the Council meeting ever again. So if the Council did not meet after that, the Prime Minister went to the Glasgow summit on climate change and he has made promises, he's given, delivered a speech and he said what the stand of the country is going to be and the Minister was also there. I'd like to know, without consulting this Council, why did you have this wide council? You did not consult any of the states. You did not consult any of the chief ministers. Because whatever promise you make, if the state governments which have to implement it. Without the state governments, nothing can move. This is a federal nation. And it's a union of states. I, I hope the government remembers that and it has to consult with the states. Correct. It has to include the states because we are the worst affected. You don't even, when there's a flood and we're, when, uh, you know, farmers are affected, when people are affected and we ask the central government for funds, we, if we ask for 4,000 crores, not even 150 crores come. Correct. So you either help us this way nor do you consult us. So I think it is very important to consult us 